Hi everyone, today I'm doing a video on how to change your brake pads on a C4500. I did the front one about a year ago. Uh, it's time to redo the rear, so I figured I'd just do a video and just show you guys how to do it. It's very simple, just need a handful of tools, very minimal tools, and you'll get it done uh, fairly quickly here. I've already did one side, so I figured I'd just record the second side to show you guys what it's about. So if you guys don't know what it is, it's C4500, it's a medium duty truck made by GM. Uh, they had this model, I believe from 2003 to 2009 was when they discontinued it. Like I said, uh, you just need a basic uh, handful of tools. I got a two, two uh, ton jack, two and a half ton, some six ton uh, jack stands. So all you really need is one. I'm doing one side at a time, so I just need one. You can lift up the whole rear end if you wanted to, but I'm um, just doing one at a time. Uh, brake pads, a uh, 5 8 wrench, disc brake toolkit, and I'm using an impact uh, dr uh, drill to be able to unbolt the, the tire. So I'll do it step by step and uh, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do a tutorial. All right, so first things first, you wanna find a good location to set up your jack. You can clearly see I'm right at the corner, right at the edge of the axle. It will pick up one wheel at a time. And, um, you know, it shouldn't roll. Uh, you can also add some chocks to, to the vehicle to make it uh, a little safer. Uh, at this point here, I have, uh, have it in gear. The e-brake is on. Uh, it's not gonna roll at all, so. Uh, I'll go ahead and jack it up and move on to the next step. Okay, so I have the vehicle jacked up. It's literally just inches off the ground. And that's all you really need just to get enough clearance to be able to set up a jack stand. You can see it where I put mine. I put mine in the front shackle. This has it right. So you you might have a leaf spring suspension, so it might be slightly different. The next step is going to be to unbolt the wheel. I'm gonna utilize a, uh, so I believe it's a 30 millimeter socket. It's equivalent to about an inch and 3 sixteenths, I believe. So I'll go ahead and get the wheel pulled off, go from there. All right guys, so I pulled the wheels off. I basically started off, pulled these caps off. Then I unbolted the lug nuts with a 30 millimeter socket and impact. Pulled the first aluminum wheel. These, uh, you may need some help. They're about 135 pounds a piece. So I did it on my own, but they are pretty heavy. There was a, uh, that rubber gasket was in between both wheels. Then I removed the steel wheel. Now I have access to this. As you can see, you know, they're extremely large rotors and uh, calipers. So uh, the next step is basically to Unbolt this bolt here and another one down below. I don't know if you can see it, it's down here. So once I unbolt them, I should be able to, to pull the caliper off, have access to, to the brakes. All right guys, bolts are off, these two bolts. Uh, that literally took me a minute to two to get them off. Once they uh, break loose, they slide off real easy. Next step is going to be right in this here, this little lip. The caliper is clipped on to underneath here. Same thing down below. So all we really do, we get a screwdriver or something to pry it and it easily pops right out. When it pops out, your caliper will be loose. So be careful, these are very heavy. You don't want it to fall down and uh, destroy your, your brake lines. So keep that in mind. Uh, once once the calipers are out and set supported somehow you can actually pull these clips right here this clip these are all new clips that come with the new brake pads so you can slide the brake pads out pull the clips out replace them and slide your brake pads in so I'll get this off move on to the next step okay guys so I just uh, I, I didn't do the top I didn't realize it's the little hook here so the other side, it was actually clipped at the bottom, but this one's clipped at the top, so I basically pried it from down below. 
so now it broke free from underneath the clip so all we do is really work this out which i'm gonna have to pause the video because i'm gonna need my two hands so stand by all right guys so these here these are the, uh, the clips that got to get removed next you literally just tap them with something they pop right out here's the new ones and the new brake pads so then i'll start off with that uh, if you look at the pistons these uh brake pads were pretty pretty worn out so they um uh they, they actually popped out quite a bit so that's where i will utilize the brake caliper tool set and I'll, I'll press these back down uh, i had the truck about a year and a half now uh possibly two years and uh, i don't really drive it i drive it maybe about 2,000 miles a year it sits sits most of the time and uh these rear brake pads uh, hadn't really done anything to them until i started hearing them squeal so i didn't really anticipate these these rotors are pretty bad shape but i'll just go ahead and swap out the pads for right now and uh uh, in a couple of months when I get some time I'll go ahead and throw some new new rotors on there and replace the pads again all right guys so the new clips are in new brake brake pads are in uh, this took me about I would say between five and ten minutes the back one was being a little stubborn so it took me a little longer so the next step is going to be um, pressing these uh, um, down and we're going to use I have this tool set here I've had it for I don't know probably about a decade I got that I bought it I don't know probably about a, a decade ago so it's a tool that is used very rare but when you do need it it is very nice and all it basically does slice in there this backs up in here. It's a little tougher doing it with one hand. And if you don't, if you don't have anything like that, this you could probably use a, a C clamp. C clamp will probably work. I mean, I've done it in the past before. Uh, it just depends on depending on on the actual. Uh, piston how how difficult it is so let me get i'll give it a try with one hand and see if we can get any, any adjustment with these twin pistons though you have to keep in mind you apply pressure here you're going to probably get get this one to come out so you gotta be very careful uh this is going to be a time where i just kind of hold it with my hand and Right pressure. Let's see if I can set, up, set this up. So you might be able to see a little bit out of it. Essentially, let me get a clamp. I'll be right back. Yes, guys. So with this, I uh, many times I've used a C clamp. I've used uh, this kind here. You squeeze it. It depends on. The actual pistons some pistons are, are a little tougher than others but we'll give it a try i'm just basically going to use this clamp here to hold one piston in place so the other one as i screw it down that it's not going to push the secondary piston out so let me get this set up and we'll continue <laughs> Oh, 
hopefully you guys can, can see what I'm doing. Got this one pressed down all the way. This one's upward. So what I'll do, I'll switch it. I'll put this clamp onto this side. So when I switch it over to here and I'm press, pressing down, the clamp will actually keep the the, the piston uh, in its place. can see it but it is actually going in pretty simple I've done some cars in the past with the piston is actually really stuck and it's a pain in the butt but this is actually going in very smooth yeah this truck um, de definitely uh, yeah Yeah, it's in it's in the backpack in the trunk. It's right there. The trunk's open. Just open it. In the hatch in the back. All right, guys. So the reason behind these being uh, pressed back down, obviously they're sticking out. Yeah, with the new kelp. Uh, or the new um, brake pads, this slot, the width is a lot wider. So now if this piston was sticking out, when I try to put the caliper back in, it won't fit. Anyhow, so the next step is basically, uh, it's gonna be to get this caliper, put it back in place. Remember there's certain parts in the caliper that attach to here and to here. After that, I'll just put those two bolts and the brake assembly will be complete. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll return back to the video.